call this meeting to order with a moment of silent prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we're here for the matter today concerning a um, fire department personnel uh, concerning a situation that happened at a fire scene approximately a week ago. And the board, although we haven't talked a lot about this has got great concerns as to what was done at the scene, how it was handled. And we're very concerned at this time as to whether the, um, the proper decisions were made. So I want to, I don't know if the board, if you have any questions for Jason, Jim and I met with Jason and we talked to him about a couple things, mainly um, the uh, personnel operating equipment, uh, putting the uh, township in harm's way for liability. So going from there on, uh, the only comment that we received from Jason is that he was under the Good Samaritans Act. So, and I mean, he can refute that or rebut that today if he wishes to. I mean, that's what we're here for. So, um, do we have any questions amongst one another? Or for those of you who didn't have the opportunity to talk to Jason personally? Well, because <clears throat> we didn't, um, do we want to give Jason the opportunity to, to say something on his behalf? I guess, first of all, I for, should for ask. The, the benefit of the rest of the board? Jason, at this time, you have the opportunity to request a closed hearing. Do you want that? No. Okay. All right. So he's denying okay. a closed a closed <clears> hearing. <throat> so <clears throat> I know some of you's probably got some questions and uh, I don't know. Let's take a statement from Jason if he wants to make one first. And I'll okay. make some questions. Uh, my name is Peter Camps. I'm an attorney for the chief. Um, I'd like to know the nature of the disciplinary action that's being taken today against my client. The nature? Yes. The I'm assuming this is a disciplinary hearing. We received a notice. I need to know if there's any disciplinary action that's being contemplated or that's already been taken against my client before he speaks. Would the, the only action that's been taken so far is we put him on administrative leave pending uh, this meeting to uh, hear whatever uh, Jason wants to provide information to the board so that the board can uh, make a decision and whatever is going to transpire moving off the uh, administrative leave. Understood. I think my client has a few things that he'd like to say. Okay. <clears throat> um, as discussed with the supervisor and the treasurer when you were questioning me, you asked me if I made the right decision. Personally, I made the right decision when bystanders came up to me and asked me if I needed help. I currently had myself and two other personnel in the truck with me. I had a heavy fire load in the building when I arrived. They came up to me and asked me if I needed any help. I said yes. They said, do you need a water supply? Do you need the hydrant hooked up to you? I said yes, please. Who, who is they, Jason? The people that showed up are all state certified firefighters. Whether they're resigned, retired, from a different department, <clears throat> whoever it may be. 
they helped set that scene up with nobody else there. If they did not help me set that scene up, that scene would have been tremendously worse. I took an oath to preserve property and preserve the public and the personnel that live in this township. We are here for a public service. Why is it because of one specific individual that we're here today. We have had countless bystanders numerous times stop at a fire scene and assist. It's, a, it's an ongoing thing, it always has been. Mr. McCoy, you're no different. You've shown up to how many scenes and helped out? Can you recall? With your permission, <clears throat> And when you told me to get some type of gear on or vest before I do it, yes. But you don't have any personal protective gear. I don't have any what? You don't have any protective gear. No, but you said to get something out of the truck, a vest or whatever, before you operate <clears throat> the way you're operating. But you did still help, so why is it different? <clears throat> Mr. Anders, I go to you. When your parents' house caught on fire, you were there and you assisted us. You helped us at that scene. I pulled the hose that day, yeah. So why is it any different today? I'm the difference with this is. is is that it's because Daryl was there and you guys received a call from Clay Township. And that's exactly what I was told in the meeting. The only reason, you never brought up any of the six other bystanders that were there. Daryl's name was the only name that you put out there. I'm. I'm not following that part, Jason. Could you clarify that? When you questioned me about the bystander being there, yeah. you asked why Daryl DuPage was there. I told you he was a bystander. He came up and asked <coughs> me if I needed help. And I told him yes. I know that he is a state certified firefighter. I showed you. You showed me a picture with pictures. Daryl, yeah. And I told you he was there. Right. I told you Monday morning as soon as you returned from vacation of everybody that was there. But the letter that we received with concern from Clay Township was that, you know, they felt that they were being put in harm's <clears throat> way also, Jason. Well, I think the board has a personal vendetta against them because he was your political rival at one time. And this is why I'm here. Is, personal is, vendetta against who? Personally, because I am friends with Daryl, and you guys are taking this out on me because he was at this fire. That, that's not true, and one of the questions I asked you at the, the meeting was why didn't you relieve them from the equipment once uh, the mutual aid uh, arrived? And your comment was, well, you didn't know if the others could operate the equipment. But obviously, uh, if nothing else, Tom Lawler was on the scene, he could operate it. Your explanation was that you needed him at the other truck. Uh, but there were other firefighters from Clay Township. Tim Holt was there. He was capable of operating. He was operating the truck. He was up in the bucket putting the fire out. But I'm, I'm saying the allocation of the resources perhaps were inconsistent with how a normal procedure should be in in operating the equipment. Well those trucks essentially operate themselves. So for him for to say that he was operating it is a false statement. He could have been standing there. There was people walking all around that place and the last thing I had to worry about at that time was who was running the truck. I was trying to preserve property. <clears throat> Mr. Supervisor, I have a question. You, you stated, Jason, well, two things, that there were six bystanders. Uh, can, can you share who those bystanders were? Absolutely. Al Sykes was at the station for three hours. Yeah. Mike Matiniak stopped into the station. We were under assistance. On scene was Daryl Dupay. Marty McGrath, Mike Holt, Bruce Holt, 
Yeah. All state certified firefighters. Yes. Okay. Um, so, in, in conjunction with Jim's question about, you know, these people milling around when other firefighters from other stations had arrived, is not seeing safety important to keep bystanders away from the active scene? They weren't in the way. Okay, well, the, the way you stated that, it sounded to me like, like <clears throat> they were kind of like in the midst of things. They were out of harm's way. They weren't in the collapse zone. They weren't near the building. Okay. Jason, I just have one question. What do you do about fire or about personnel operating equipment with radios in hand? Um, without any gear on. I mean, how do you think my ocean looks at stuff like that? I'm, I'm just trying to figure, Jason. Uh, no matter who the pump operator is, nobody ever wears full gear when they're operating a truck. It just doesn't happen. Never has, even when you were out there. you're positive in your heart of hearts that my OSHA couldn't <clears throat> do anything about this picture here. As I told you before, I would make the same decision again. It was okay. the right decision at the time. Okay. Anything else, Christian? Um, Mr. Supervisor, other than speaking to Tom Lauer, has anybody else on um, either department, our department, or play department, um, have they been interviewed as to what has happened? Yes. What the situation was? I've talked to some personnel from our own department. I've talked to... That were at the scene? At the scene. Okay. I've talked to personnel that were um, mutual aid to the scene, chiefs, and ran everything by which I thought was, you know, a very high risk, high liability for something to go wrong. And I uh, sought legal counsel. I mean, I believe I've done a pretty good background on you know, what we're doing here today. And I don't take this lightly at all. Question for you and Jimmy. Um, Jimmy, you're a former firefighter. Um, I, I don't know what fire department protocol is. I've never been on a fire department. Um, is what Jason is telling us that it's common for firefighters not Crystal, to it's be been since geared? 1993 since, or okay. so that I've been on the fire department. Things have changed so much since the day that I was on that I couldn't answer that question. I, I honestly don't remember. <coughs> Were you state certified, Jim? Pardon? Were you state certified for one minute? Back then, I don't believe we had to be. Were we? Yeah. Yes, sir. I honestly don't remember. So, so you don't have fire one Pardon? You don't have fire one I do not, no. <coughs> I do have a couple of questions. Mr. Supervisor, um, do you have anything to say about that? For the certification? The, well, no, as far as, as what Jason's telling us about the firefighters not needing protective gear and, and um, so on and so forth. I think the standard upgrade, obviously, that was recently updated, maybe. Uh, Two yes, years ago. Well, I don't think it was that long ago. And just before Larry Lutzke left, it was updated. Okay. And that did state that uh, protective gear was required okay. when responding. Okay. <clears throat> if you're not in a hot zone, you don't have to wear full turnout gear. Hot zone is the actual work area. If you're standing by the truck, you do not need full turnout gear. May I have your name? Justin Strasburg. That's 
Jason, could you back up just a little bit? What are what were the three things that you just named for arriving at a scene that you're responsible for? What's that? The three things that that life safety and property conservation. Okay. Save your life in the first comment. Okay. Ken, I'm going to let you say something because you're the assistant chief, okay? But I want to be careful that we don't. Well, I just wanted to comment on three of the things you brought up, if I may. Yeah. Um, allocating personnel. I get the impression, you guys, everything you look into, people you talk to, it's all revolves around full-time departments. Now, granted, we have this operate and do everything like they do. We have to we hold the same standards. But being paid out calling, you know this better than anybody up there, Tom. You're limited with manpower. So when things are going downhill, which it's already going downhill when you show up with the smoke that's showing. And I, I was not seen, but I've seen pictures. You when you know you have people coming up to you asking to help and they're trained, you don't have to worry about them at all on that scene because you already you've worked with them 90 percent of them that you run across and if you know their background they already know what's safe what's not safe what they can or can't do being not a member of the department being there as a, a bystander so in his and i'll tell you not every one of us officers talk we would have done the same thing when you're that short manpower until mutual aid gets there you're taking anybody you can get Especially when you got two people inside the building and Chief was trying to run the engine at the time, you can't run the scene as efficient. When you're trying to run the pump panel, the tower's pulling up, you got two guys inside that can't find the fire initially, and there's smoke billowing out the back of the building. That's a pretty big concern sending people into a building like that. You're responsible for those guys. So when he gives a chance to get Tom Lauer off the tower to run the pump panel so he can effectively, more efficiently run that scene, and you've got bystanders that you know what they're doing, they've got 20 plus years in the service that you know of, and every one of them there run that tower, almost every one has run that tower at some point in time in the past. That's the least of his concerns is how that tower is being managed at that point. They already have a zone where they're setting it up where they need it, effect where it's effective. So as far as a, a allocating personnel as, as other departments come in there, you're more worried about trying to mitigate the situation, not who's running the pump panel. And as far as having someone stand there, he's, it's a very vague picture you have. It does, it, there's a thousand things you can implicate into that. He's, number one, if he's standing there, it, you should have a guy at the pump panel when you have people in the bucket. He's more than qualified to be those extra set of guys. Does that mean he's running the pump panel? No. Um, so when other departments come in there, you're trying to get other guys packed up into the side, into the building to help out you guys that are worried about getting people outside the standby as your team. There's a lot of other things going on and to worry about who's standing at that tower when you know they're qualified. As far as scene safety, it goes back to these guys know better than anybody or as well as anybody us full or fire the fires that are on, on the department, what's safe. They know where to be, where not to be. They know what hoses that you can stand over, walk over, whatever. They know all that. So again, you don't have to worry about the people you know that have come up to you and said, can I help? It's the other people that want to help that have no fire experience, you don't know who they are. At that point, you try to keep those people away. And again, Bob, you're well aware of that. You know who the people you can have on scene or not on scene who you need to keep away. And as far as operating equipment with turnout gear, it's our policy right now that the driver of any one of our trucks doesn't wear his turnout gear because there's more of an issue with NFPA right now. Guys are having more of a difficulty driving equipment with all their gear on. And so there, it's actually, you, more times than not, departments are mandating that the operator of that engine or truck 
does not wear his turnout gear. So in lieu of that, when you get on scene, he's helping lay supply lines, he's helping pull hand lines, he's helping do a lot of things before he even has a chance to get his turnout gear on. And that's if he needs to. It's not mandatory that the operator wear that. Again, going back to that picture, if Daryl's standing there, it does not mean he needs to have his turnout gear on. Especially if he's just there for a set of eyes to make sure the bucket doesn't go into something that it shouldn't do. Even though the guys are operating up there, they're tunnel vision on the smoke and the fire. So, I mean, to answer, to further expand on some of those questions you have, and then the last thing, it's just like, being the assistant chief here, I'm kind of disappointed you guys didn't notify me right away when you made that decision. I have to hear from my officers with a text that we have a special emergency meeting. I got to get to the hall here to find out my chief's being suspended, and I'm the assistant chief. The next guy in charge of all this doesn't give me warm and fuzzy that you guys are standing behind us or even care how our operation works over there. Well, I can assure you that's not the case, uh, Ken. <clears throat> well, I'm we sure it's not, but it's still a little time. bit of a concern. And Ken, I can assure you that um, in the proper timing that maybe you did grab somebody off the street to pull a hose or do this or do that. But once qualified, we had five companies on that fire. Once qualified men or women arrived to relieve the people that you needed to relieve, they should have been relieved. That's that's 101, Ken. I'm sorry. You know, it's you don't. Well, in in, in a perfect world, you I, you're absolutely right. But obviously, and it's proven day in and day out, that's not where we live. So for you guys to come down this hard on a slight oversight that maybe we didn't switch him out, if, if that's in fact what he was doing over there, I think this is pretty harsh. Okay. Thank you. Do you still have a question? Yeah, I still have a couple of questions. Um, <coughs> one, Jason, how many, I know there were five departments on the scene. How many men and women, how many firefighters total were on the scene once all mutual aid arrived? I'm not 100% of that. Under 20? Okay. Um, how long before first mutual aid showed up on the scene to Baltimore or Clay? Who was Probably five minutes. Okay. <coughs> You've answered my question why no turnout gear was provided to the guy around the pump handle. I understand that now. I didn't understand it before. I didn't know why. Turnout gear wasn't provided. No, I don't understand. Um, I'm concerned about the liability issues. This is my big concern, the liability of my OSHA. Um, I was told that you acted under the Good Samaritan Act. I read up on that this weekend. The only thing I could find out it was emergency personnel for medical purposes only. I didn't see anything about the firefighter aspect of it. If there is something that covers bystanders under the Good Samaritan Act for firefighting, I didn't see it anywhere. Um, one thing I do want to clarify, yeah, I helped at my parents' fire. I pulled holes, but I under no circumstance did I get in any way, anybody's way of working that fire. I stood back and let you guys do your job. That's plain and simple and the truth. I was an EMT on the fire department. I don't remember if I had any certifications or not. It's so far long ago, I couldn't tell you. Um, as far as this meeting goes, yeah, I'm upset that things happened the way they did. I don't think personally it was in the best interest of the township as far as liability is concerned. That's all I have. I, I would like to say that I, I agree with you, um, especially on the liability issue. And I have a concern. Um, Jim, you're saying that the SOPs that were recently readopted require turnout gear, but then Ken, you're saying that well, it's kind of procedure that especially the driver doesn't wear the turnout gear. I think um, a concern, it, it doesn't really 
affect what we're talking about today, but I think we need to amend those SLPs <coughs> to reflect what we're actually doing. Um, because that becomes a liability issue. I mean, if the rules say this, but we're doing this. It's our discretion to, um, the main thing is with the tower, there, it doesn't matter. It's a driver's discretion because some people are not comfortable with their big boot, boots on driving the equipment. And Other I get people that. Are. I get that. So how is that a liability? Well, because when the SOPs, the, the, the guiding light that you're to follow says that you will do this, but you're choosing not to for whatever reason, they need to be amended to reflect that it's optional or, or however we decide we want to work that. Moving forward, I'd like to direct all questions to Jason. Okay. Please. So, Jimmy, do you have anything else? To I'm, I'm okay. Uh, any questions, Jim? No. Crystal, you're good, you said? I am. We, we still have the, the issue of liability, and I don't know oh, that, that, that we have the ability to address some of those liability questions. I, I understand what Jason's saying. I understand the dilemma that he was in being shorthanded. I understand that there were qualified bodies on hand and, and why he did what he did, um, utilizing people that, that knew what they were doing. Um, but for me, the, the question of liability is not answered at this point. Or, or I should say jeopardy with, with the township in regards to liability. Jason, how many additional personnel showed up and how long did it take? You said the first thing you were right about five minutes? Yeah, approximately. But how many people did you have out there? With that first truck that came in? Total. I mean, within, say, 10 or 15 minutes, how many people did you have out there? 12, maybe? 12. Would you have had the opportunity then to make some changes in terms of putting those people in place or the people who were actually there in order to try to help them? Not with the objectives that we were trying to get done. What was that? To put the fire out. <clears throat> hey, crews inside, hey, crews on top of the roof. You got to have a rig team, two in, two out. Every two people that go in, you need two people outside in case something goes bad. Ready to go. You had five units sequestered and you only had 12 people. <clears throat> Oh, we're gonna accept one guy. It's on four of them, two of them were ready. I called Marine City that we don't normally call. They sent me two guys. Okay. It was two o'clock in the afternoon. Most people work. Manpower is very short. Supervisor, I, I have a, another question um, that's slightly off topic. Um, Jason, last week um, you were requested to produce the inspection logs, and it's my understanding you didn't know where they were. I said they were either in the file or in the computer. Either or? No. I okay. wasn't exactly sure where they were, which okay. they were. <clears throat> and who maintains those inspection logs? I do. How is it that you <clears throat> maintain those logs but don't exactly know where they are? Because when I got back to the station, I got a call from the supervisor saying, hey, come over here. Did oh. I not ask you, Jay, to bring the, a copy of You told me to look for it real quick and if I could find it to bring it. Are the logs kept in a book? <clears throat> kept in a file together. Okay. Or on the computer. Um, if you were requested to do so today, could you produce them? I would have to look for them. But Jay, don't you do that? Don't you do the businesses once a year <clears throat> for um, 
for safety purposes and stuff like that. I mean, I know we pay you all the time on the situation. We pay you an additional amount of money to keep up fire inspection records so that, you know, we keep our businesses in some type of, you know, safety alignment. But, I, I mean, you know, when we asked you about that, you said that that report could be as much as a year, year and a half old. It could be. So you don't inspect it every year? There's not every business in the country that gets inspected every year. What do we pay you for? And we give you a separate wage for the fire inspector, Jay, to make sure that you can put each arm in harm's way of keeping things that they shouldn't keep. In enclosed places, and I need to interject on behalf of my client. I saw that there was a notice today that there was a question about what happened on a particular scene on a particular day. There was no notice that there was any issue with respect to any record keeping, and in any event, my client would have been denied access to that as he's been suspended with pay and denied the ability to look at anything whatsoever to assist him in preparing for the hearing today. Correct? Okay. okay. Tom, any other questions? Well, we've got a situation on our hands that I'm going to be honest with you, I think is very unbecoming uh, the actions of our prior chief, who is, has the responsibility to keep the best interests of the residents at hand. Um, and I am not happy with his performance. And so neither than I. Um, so I, it would be my recommendation, my motion, to terminate Jason at uh, four o'clock today for allowing non-fire department personnel to operate township equipment. Wow. Mm -hmm. Support. I'll support it. Excuse me, sir. All in favor? Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Are, we, are, we, are there any questions on the matter? Uh, just comment, Mr. Uh, <coughs> Supervisor. I agree with the initial suspension administratively because it's not disciplinary in nature, but I have some additional questions and some information I'd like to be obtained or obtained uh, about the incident uh, before I make any kind of decision on a termination issue. So at this particular point, I will vote no. Okay. going to take a roll call vote on Jim Gannis voting on suspension. This is, I absolutely hate these things. I vote nay. I vote yes. Yes. Tom, vote no. Go. Crystal? I have to agree with Tom. I still have unanswered questions, and therefore I'm voting no. Okay. So what do you want to do moving forward? I, it would be my motion um, to continue to investigate um, this and um, the question of missing inspection logs and either reconvene at a regular board meeting or set up a special meeting once we have um, answered some of the questions that Tom has. Um, I'm sure, well, Jimmy has already expressed he had liability concerns, as do I, and um, we need to get some answers to some of those liability questions as well. That would be my motion. If I can make a comment uh, after she's done. 
Well, I, I am done. That, that's my motion. Well, there's there's some things to consider. We have a we have a chief on administrative leave, so we're going to leave him on administrative leave until these questions are answered. I will amend my motion to do that. Yes. Okay. Um, questions on the motion. <coughs> Only that because of the nature of the issue and the incident, I would agree with the uh, administrative suspension because, again, it was not a form of discipline. It's just a matter of delaying the decision until more information is obtained. Okay, would you read back your motion, Crystal? Okay, well, I'm, I'm going to reword it slightly. I'm going to. Um to continue um, with the administrative leave to investigate the missing inspection logs and the liability issues regarding the incident on Thursday, May 4th, I think, the 4th, is that correct? No, the 11th. May 11th. May 4th. Is it, was it May 4th? Was it May 4th? Okay. May 4th. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any questions on the motion? Jim Embers, how do you vote? Yes. Jim Jim. No. Bob McCoy? No. Tom Meter? Uh, yes, but I would uh, just add to that. Again, I think we need to have Tom, the motion is on the vote. It's either the A or the for this. Okay, what am I voting on now? What? To continue yes, with the your administrative your motion? leave, yes. Yes. Okay. Crystal Sobey? Yes. Okay, it's passed three to two. So, um, Jason, you will remain on administrative leave until we can get further investigation on some of this. And um, <clears throat> we will have to get the and little John, I'd like to definitely meet with you after and Tom Well. Can I ask the question now since I'm still in the guy that's holding the bag now? <clears throat> what exactly are you guys, you keep mentioning you're worried about the liability. What what part of this is the liability you're questioning? So I'm clear. Anybody helping on scene or certain individuals helping on scene? Yes. I mean we can discuss that in our investigation and you will be included in more of the conversations. Yeah. So you don't want anybody that's non fire personnel helping on scene? I said we will be looking into that, Ken. I'm not going to okay. make a comment right now. I'll make a statement that, you know. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. That's cool. um, oh. at, at this time, we're going to open up the meeting to public comments. And I believe everyone knows the rules. It's, it's three minutes. So I'm going to go ahead, Tim. Tim, is that your hand? Yeah. Uh, for those that don't know me, I'm Tim Holt. Uh, I've been in the fire service 35 years, 27 as a career firefighter. I'm at 12 in IRA, and I'm currently a lieutenant in Clay. We were the second truck on that scene that day. Correct. Did you guys happen to pull the tapes of that scene? We're going, I mean, you should have. You, you, I talked to the chief, uh, and yes, I know you were on the, the truck with um, Chief Rose. Right. <clears throat> so that I do know. Yes, sir. Okay. Because there's a lot of Monday morning quarterback going on here. But uh, if you pull the tapes, you'll get some sense of the urgencies of the things that were going on. Um, when we pulled up, there was four of us. Jason called and wanted to know where we were at. And uh, I told him we were by the Colony Tower. We'll be there within minutes. He says, as soon as you arrive, send me your, all your guys. I says, we got four guys with us. You right. had two coming from the well, yeah. And two trucks, I think. Well, we had, we, had, we had a second engine coming from the island. Correct. So we depleted all our resources to come to this. Okay. Uh, like Jason stated, his objectives are life safety, property conservation, and incident stabilization. He made all the right decisions. 
because he'd sent guys inside. There was no, no life hazard inside at that time. He was trying to extinguish it. Realized it was going to become a defensive fire. When I pulled up, the way the smoke is coming out of that building, uh, if you ever taken, anybody that's taken any art of reading smoke, the color, volume, and density coming out of that building knew things were going to happen fast and something wasn't going to be good. We were waiting for the tower. I asked, where's the tower? And they said, it's in our ground. Tom Plower showed up with the tower. I, I believe I was told that Tom said he wasn't comfortable pumping the tower, working the tower. Darrell was put in charge of setting up the tower. And we were going defensive. The crew inside, and I really feel that you guys need to reach out to the people that were on scene. I know you reached out to Chief Rose, but there was other individuals there too that you could have got a good picture from. I mean, you're just looking at pictures, snapshots from exactly. incidents of people standing around. You don't get the big picture of what it looked like on scene. I know you're gonna cut me off. But. No, uh, Tim, I knew you were there, and I'll be honest with you, Tim, I mean, our relationship has been somewhat cool, you know, um, but, but cordial, okay? Right. And, and I just didn't know if it was the right thing to contact you. I really didn't. I'm, I'm being open with you, okay? So, you can contact me anytime. In fact, when you're your investigation here, you can contact me. And I will. More than happy to. Now, how can you make a call like this if you haven't even talked He's to these got people? Before. Excuse me. So, everything that Jason did was was for a reason. He put Darrell in charge of the tower because it's a unique apparatus. You guys are wondering why he didn't replace him with other, other people that were there. Marine City, they don't know how to operate that tower. New Baltimore doesn't know how to operate a tower. The only people you had there was Clay, Ira, and Elgin. I was up in the bucket. Right. Uh, John was there. John was, I think it's John. We call him Red. Red was there, yes. Red was there. He's qualified. He was... I mean, I have, I have done a little bit of research, you guys. I have, I'm not just throwing it to the wind. I mean, this is an important thing right. for both sides. We understand that. Is it needed? Question of that the Chief Darrell didn't have a turnout gear on, or is it because he was operating the truck? Because I, I believe if you check with your insurance company, if you deputize somebody at a scene, they're covered under your liability insurance. The same with the police department. I've got the report. There was no deputization. I mean, I got to rebut well, for that purpose, Tim. By a chief commandeering of the person, that's deputized. A fire yeah. chief can commandeer a citizen equipment. There's a state law on it. And if you refuse, it's a felony. So, okay, Tim, I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Okay, well, like I said, all, he went from a, off, we went from offensive to defensive, <clears throat> pulled the guys out, we went up in the bucket. Uh, the other individuals on scene helped pull five inch holes. They, they hand jacked five inch holes from his legs, through the car wash, over the fence, to the hydrant. I'll challenge any of you guys to try that. It's tough. Marty did that, most of that. I know he didn't. So Marty, Mike, Bruce, and Mike did. Oh, the first one for trouble. Okay. So, Jason made all the right decisions at that by a fire scene. Nobody got hurt. The building was safe. Yeah. From what I understand, they're going to duck their, I heard they're going to doze it, but all they got to do is put a truss roof on it, it's safe. Nobody got hurt, everybody went home. That's our number one goal is everybody went home and that's what Jason made sure. Yes, sir. <clears throat> My name is Justin Jasper. I'm in the fire service. I'm on a career department. You were mentioning uh, inspections. And you guys own a business? He comes to inspect your business today say you're not supposed to have a 55 gallon drum of gasoline in there. He walks out and tomorrow you put that drum of gasoline in there and something happens. Are you gonna knock him for that since you went behind since you went behind his inspection, did what you're not supposed to do since he inspected it today and that happened tomorrow. Are you gonna knock him for that? I mean he inspects it. Who's to say it in that time? The day after the inspection man then people didn't do something that they weren't supposed to. You can't knock them for that. Mr. Supervisor, I don't think that was the question at hand. Um, that's conjecture, but well taken. Thank you. Uh, Marty, go ahead. Well, I've been in this community for 
45 years. I helped on fires when Chief Burles was a chief. I helped when Rocky Golden was a chief. I helped when Mike Holt was a chief. I helped when Jason was a chief. There's never been an issue. You know, you're, you're wondering about his inspections. You know how many people have available in this township every day. Usually three. And now you guys are going to limit that by taking them out of service. Put them on administrative leave. If my mom knows where there's something happens to her, and we don't have the manpower, shame on every one of you. I'm telling you. I agree. I hold holes in your house and your dad's fire, and I had to come out here, neither did you. It wasn't an issue. You guys have paid Tommy Kaufman to take a dozer and go into a burning barn and push hay up with no turnout here. In the past, I was there. The township paid him. You can ask Paul. What about liability on that? Okay. Uh, we're trying to stay to this thing, Mark. This weekend. But it's past practice. Okay. When you made, when you, when you set a precedent, Bob, how do you change it? Because somebody from Clay calls and they got Sandra Bridges. It's wrong. You're making a bad decision. I'm telling you. Amen. Amen. You know, any one of your houses can burn. You've got three people. Who will Clay Township right now, and you can call your buddy Harvey. They've got one guy on the mainland, two people on the island. And if you want to talk about how great they do with these, Chief Rose was on the roof with no SCD and no gloves. And that's a violation of the law. Am I right, Carl, as an instructor? He was on the, you're asking him, because he's got all this knowledge. He was on that fire scene, on the roof, the working roof, did sell on the roof and didn't have any turn up here, didn't have proper intervening apparatus. If he went through the roof, he had died. <clears throat> Thank God the towers are putting water on. And everybody Bob, you're asking why he wasn't replaced, ask anybody in this community, between Clay Under and Alcan, who taught them how to run the tower. The guy that taught them is the guy that ran it that day. Carol taught me how to run the tower. You can ask anyone. Okay, we'll you. Hang on. Hold it. Oh. Right. <coughs> I'm finished, Bob. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. My name is Jason Strasburg. I also got a history in the fire service. You stated that you spoke to each of the chiefs. Not each of them. Did you say some of them? Yeah. Okay. I am personal friends with one of the chiefs that was on that scene. I spoke to him after that because I listened to it on my scanner 200 miles away. Okay. His exact words were, Chief Keller did one hell of a job saving that building. And if he was the incident commander on that scene, he would have done the exact same thing that Chief Keller did. Now, throughout the comments in here, you guys keep talking about one person running that tower because of that photo right there. Chief Keller showed up with limited personnel. Everybody else in the community came up with limited personnel. So would you have wanted your chief to make a decision to pull somebody in full turnout gear out from saving that people's livelihood, their business, to have them stand on a truck and just stand there, watch the two people up in the air and watch water coming out of the truck? Where I, it just goes back to you just one person on that truck. Were you concerned about any other vehicles that were being operated on that scene? Any other trucks? that were there, or were you just talking about that photo right there? No, we're not just talking about the photo. But we're that's what the whole conversation, you have even said, you've held that photo up many times. That's one of the when things. When Ken Little John spoke of other incoming companies, your first words were, sir, did they have personnel? Why wasn't that personnel replaced? And what, that's exactly what I don't understand. Okay, you're, you're sitting in the office, I'm 200 miles away listening. You were not there, sir. That man is protecting his firefighters, the other community's firefighters that are coming in, and their property. So we have other chiefs that came to that scene and wear a white helmet as well, said that man did a hell of a job saving that building and protecting the community. He also said he would have done the exact same thing on putting somebody on that truck if they were state certified to run that truck. Right, he did. So I'm just at a loss is why this man is still suspended. I mean, it's, it's, I know you got politics to do and everything like that. You have politics, bylaws, whatnot. But if you got surrounding chiefs commenting and commending him for the job he did that day, and this one I'm talking about has 35 years. He was a career firefighter. He retired. And he's been a chief for 18 years almost 20 years now in this department. 
He said he would do the exact same thing. The exact same thing that Chief Keller did. So I did, I'm just at a, at a loss here, that's all. Thank you, Jason. Yep. Uh, Jeff. Bob. Uh, Jeff Scout, Iron Township, going on 25 some years. Just a quick comment. In your investigation, please, you can't, don't mix up, you had 100 people show up, whatever that number is, versus the qualified number of people, okay? So through your investigation, find out how many people were qualified to run the tower. So don't get stuck on, Jason had 16 people, I wasn't there. Um, he had 16 people there or 20 people, but out of those people, who were qualified? On our department now, we got how many people? 15? How many are qualified to fight fighters? That are physically can go in. So you gotta, you gotta just consider that with the incomings of mutual aid. Just because, and I don't know, Clay sends four people. That doesn't mean any of those four or all of them are qualified to run the tower. Or even fight fighters. That's it. Is that it? Yes, yes sir. sir. Um, go ahead, Ken. To expand on that as we place the people, people coming in, if they're not, most of, everybody here is more qualified or more familiar with fighting interior and exterior fire than running the aerial. We all can do it, yeah. Are we all great at it? A lot of guys aren't. They're afraid of it. They don't like it, but they can do it. So, you guys want to get hung up on, he should have replaced somebody. When you've got other, there's multiple, multiple, multiple things to do on that fire ground, whether you're doing interior attack or you're doing a defensive mode. Again, you should know that, Bob. I do. Yeah, but I do. it seems like nobody on the board has any idea that you, but don't you talk to them about how things operate in the fire service of the many years that you were in there? So when you've got uh, people coming in and you've heard, you know, you got two people, four people, these guys, you're better suited to getting them on the fire trying to put the fire up than worry about we're changing a guy out that you know is qualified. Now granted, there's politics on your end. When you're trying to put a fire out, worry about firefighters' lives, worry about property preservation, your guys' politics is the last thing on the books That's right. to worry about. That's right. Now that doesn't mean you have disregard for the safety of the community, the safety of the well-being of this township. I was a chief for four years, been in the service going on 27. I've been an officer probably 25 of those years. So I get it that you have to, as a chief, the guy in charge, you have to <coughs> be aware of what the liability of the township, the liability of the fire department. But you also have to worry about the guys you're sending into a burning building because you're liable for them. And to me, that supersedes your guys' little quarrel with, or, Alga, or Clay's quarrel with the individual. because. Trust me, we all here know this is all about because one individual on that truck. Yep. Refer back to the picture. Okay, the, 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 we need to quit all this extra hoopla. It's all about Daryl being on the truck. And it's because of the politics of the administration. I'm sorry that that's there. We're sorry about that. That's their, that's their personal deal. It shouldn't be ours. This is our community. He's doing what's best for this community. The people that pay taxes in this community, guys. He's not out there trying to screw you. With his own son on that roof. Yeah. You guys got to understand that. He's not doing anything to put, make your lives harder. Trust me. His main thing is worrying about the firefighters on that scene and the people's property he's protecting. As well as what's best for this township to, litigate, to, mitig to minimize your guys' as having anything to do with it. So please, don't get hung up on, he should, there's people come in, and he should replace them. These guys are more qualified to do the fire fighting than to run in the area. Can they all run the area? Yes, we've all been trained out. I'm one of the guys that helps train people, because I came from a department that had an area. So, I get it. You know how many times we go over this area? Each community has an area for three months. So when it's here, we're training on it. Then it goes away for nine months. <laughs> So, as much as we train on it, how much do you think these guys really want to put their hands on that when the truck's there? Right or wrong, they don't want to. Okay. So, that is the least of his concern is replacing Daryl. Knowing the situation or not knowing the situation. Percy, because when I was first told about this, I had no idea he was in litigation with the township. So, if I was there, I would have done the same thing. And then I'd have my butt sitting in here. 
And it's wrong. I've got to give other people time. Yeah, I'm to sorry. Okay, no. No, we're trying to. You should keep doing it. Anyone else before we um, close the meeting? Pat. It seems to me we should be thanking this young man instead of trying to crucify him. Exactly. I just want to make a comment personally. We are not trying to crucify him, Pat. Sure. Well, I do respect, sir. That's exactly what it looks like when sitting back here. Excuse me. Excuse me. Pat, we took an oath to try to protect the citizens of this township. Jason made a comment on the, on the fire scene that he did the best what he was supposed to do to his knowledge. I am doing the best that I know to do with the knowledge that I have. You know? And no, you're not Bobby McCoy because he sat back and he didn't vote. How come you didn't? You're close-minded on all of us. On what? With the with the voting. At least Mr. Eater no. sat back and said, "No." We don't not. serve. Pardon? We don't serve a, a yes board here. Yeah. One thing yeah, when saying. all of the board members speak, they speak what their opinion is. I don't want a yes board to be honest with you. Uh, and there's a lot of that out there. We give each and every individual the right to speak and the right to vote. I'm not going to go out there and try to coerce board members into doing this or to do that. But what I'm saying is, you know, I believe that I'm doing my job to the best of my ability. I'm not here to crucify Jason. Well, it sure I'm looks here like to, you are. And everybody else sitting in this room looks like it. That's, that's okay. It's but not. I have an obligation. To 65, so there's, there's 50 people in this room. I have an obligation to 6,500 residents, and that's because it's one o'clock in the afternoon. Exactly. For there you go. <laughs> when you're when you're notice for the meetings, it's seven o'clock on the top. I'm doing the best I can, and if it's not good enough, it's not good enough. I apologize. Thank you. Um, as far as you doing your best for the community, you did talk once, okay? Right, but as, as far as you doing the best for the community financially, that's one thing. But I can tell you, every firefighter in here would trust their life with that man sitting in the front. Not one firefighter would second guess him. Don't doubt that a bit. But well, why he doesn't second guess in his ability as a department head yeah. on a fire scene? If we have a fire today at our house, he's not going to come. That's wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Put it back to work where we need it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Listen to voters. Um, Supervisor, I'd just like to clarify a few things. Um, Tim mentioned one thing. I, I did come in with the area out of the tower as the uh, second vehicle and um, I was with a probationary person. Uh, I spotted the tower, put it where it needed to be, engaged the pump, engaged the power kickoff, got the vehicle ready, got out, I put my gear on because I didn't drive with it on. And at that point, I knew our water resources were very limited because all we had was the water on engine one. We had no water to the tower, so the tower at that point was useless. I went over to the chief and I asked him what he wanted me to do because he was struggling at that time trying to manage the scene and run the truck. He told me to take over engine one and make sure that the guys inside the building had enough water to support them and they weren't put in danger. So wasn't anything that I didn't want to run the tower. I was I was fine with that. But as procedure is, you go to the chief and you ask them what the next thing that needs to be done. And at that point, with people inside the building, the only priority I had was to make sure that they had enough water to support themselves in there if they needed to. So during this whole process, there were other people coming and going, but very limited. Uh, I know Baltimore came in with one regular member and two probationary members. There was Marine City came with two people, the chief and one other person. So there weren't a lot of people capable of doing what was necessary. 
but I feel it was the power was my responsibility and if there's some blame to be given it was probably mine because I took the vehicle there it, and that was my vehicle but the chief made the decision at that point what he wanted and I was simply following his orders so I hope that clarifies a little bit as to what had happened but the chief was in charge and that's his call where he wants his people at that particular time and there was the thick the smoke was so thick at that point I couldn't even see the pump panel in front of my face to be honest with you it was that thick and it was going downhill very quickly. but you're still here today to tell the story I am but uh, time to get water supply before you reach late right there was no water supply when excuse I pulled me. the power. Excuse me. So if there's any questions the board has, I'd be glad to answer them, but I just wanted to give you my point of view as the second vehicle and okay. why things happened the way it is. I didn't walk away from the tower because I wasn't comfortable with it. I did what the chief asked me to do. Jim, you had your hand up or no? Yeah. Well, that's the case. I says, you know, I know this is all about, and so do you, and so does everybody up there. It all had to do with the phone call that you got from a certain person over in Clay Township. See, I didn't get a phone call. You got a phone call from Boise. I got a letter. And, and I'll tell you what, I says, you know, you've heard nothing but the best from the people in this place. I spent 21 years on that department, too. So I know what's going on and where it's at. And like I said, Jimmy was on before, especially you, you were on. So I sure as heck do hope that you people, especially that guy sitting next to you, I sure do hope that you turn around and change your mind here because what you're doing, you're, you're being made a fools of right now. Yes. And that's what you want to end up that's for what you're doing. You're, every time we came up to a decision here about something, all of a sudden somebody throws it, well, well, we'll just want to go to you. Well, what's these pieces of paper that they did? Right, Crystal? Or what was this? And what was that? And it was nothing to do with what's going on now. It's something, you're, you're you keep throwing something in off the wall that could be said out of this with him. And we could have sat down with Jason, well, let's get together and let's, let's look at these SOGs. Let's look at these. After you get the need updating, let's get together. Let's, you know, if you need help doing, let's do it. Not crucifying the man. Not for doing his job. I sure wish you guys would get together here on this. I really do. Exactly. Because you people ain't acting like the people I know. And I know most of you out there. And I mean, I know you pretty darn good, most of you out there. <coughs> Sir, I'm Mike here. I'm with uh, Clay Township Fire Lieutenant on the department. And I have a couple of questions for you. Clay Township now, with everything that's going on there, to be honest with you, the wheels are coming off the way. I don't want to see that happen to hire. Now, the only question I have for you guys is, just regarding this incident, do you feel safer with Jason or without him? Thank you. With him. Okay, I think we are, Jason, I'll give you a one line, okay? No, quick, you don't even have to set your timer. You stated that we're, you're concerned about the, the community safety, correct? A couple minutes ago? Safety? You, you said something about your, what's that, liability, safety. Okay, the liability. If we're looking at that, and we're looking at this one particular fire incident, middle of the day, department showing up with two men or women, that man right there sent everybody on that scene home to their families that night. That building is still standing down there, and them owners did not lose everything they worked their entire life for. I think politics need to be left out of this from neighboring communities because of a photo because someone's got to bug up their, their backside about one man that was on that scene, who was also a highly decorated man and firefighter. Okay, Jesus. Oh, I said I'm not for sure. Um, just, just one thing. 
Is this the only fire that's happened that has occurred during the day? The only what? Is this the only fire in this whole community that has happened during the day? It goes back to political. No, it doesn't. I mean, yes, it does. Yes, it does. It's political. It's to do with the picture, and it's a crying shame. There's fires during the day, all day long. Here's the guy. He's supporting. Oh, I hear. I hear that. Yes. Now all of a sudden, just this particular fire. All of a sudden, now we're crucifying him. Marty, short, please. Very short about it. If he's on administrative leave or pay him, why don't you let him do his job? Do your investigation. But if something happens at one of our houses, we want him there. No. He's trained. We've spent 18 years of resources. This board, this township, our tax dollars have paid to train him. He's put the time in. This isn't something so egregious that we can't use him. By leaving him off is wrong. Put him back, let him serve the people, us, other people here. My mom, who's 79 years old. Mrs. May, Frank May, who he brought over twice in the last week to take care of. I got a letter from them. They're an outrage. Because he's there when they need him, and now he's not. You won't let him. You want to have a little hired before doing it. Let him serve us while you're doing it. Okay, thank you. All right, I'm going to close. There's the gentleman at the very back. Matt, yeah, go ahead. Firefighter with. Uh, with Ira? I'm, I'm sorry, Matt? Matt Crane. Thank you. Firefighter with Ira. And one of the things that concerns me is you guys are all about when these trucks showed up, why didn't you replace Daryl? Well, a couple of things. When a fire truck shows up in our world, it doesn't come with five guys all the time. So it's not 20, 20 people we have coming off of those trucks. Then the incident changes all the time. That's why we have an incident management system. So now when the conditions change on the fire ground, we have different priorities, whether it's ventilation or life safety or water supply. All of those things don't get done on their own. They all require people. And if you can't quite understand that concept, think of people like money in regards to you guys trying to deal with the budget for the township. If you had an unlimited budget, we'd have awesome buildings, parades, and fireworks every damn weekend. But we don't. And why? We don't have money. But you do the best you can with the money you have for the township. This is no different. He did what he could, the best that he could, for that scene with the resources he had. Thank you. Okay, I, uh, Larry. Ooh. Yeah, I just wanted to say something. Uh, Larry Mayer from the Mayor of Works. We've got over 300 and some boats in our marina. Jason, the chief there, has been through there. He knows where everything is, all of our stanchers, where the hydrants are, everything that's going on there. If that son of a puck blows up, God bless, it never happens. I'd feel very uncomfortable without the chief being there. Number two, then you'll we'll see liability against the township. You can't have a guy like that not on work. If something happens when that goes, you've seen the last fire we had over there, Bob. Well, this would be twice the fire if it ever happens. God bless it doesn't. But uh, without Jason on the job, uh, not uh, the assistant chief there, I, he sounds like a great guy, but. Uh, He's the guy that's always there poking his nose in my door, giving me trouble. Where's this? Where's that? Uh, no problem with it. But uh, I just want to say that uh, very uncomfortable with him being off the job. Yes, sir. Yeah, I was there at the store working, and I always want to make a call. Your name, please? Sarm Kato. Sarm Z Kato. And then... Uh, after what he did, you know, his real short words, I thought he's going to get promoted, you know, all the work that he did at the store, you know. Because he did save the other side of the store, and it's full of liquor. If that liquor would have caught on fire, it would have been a big problem in that place. And they did a good job of saving that. Don't want to worry about a pump operator hiring more people full time. 
Manpower. Okay. Uh, I'd uh, like to make a point of clarification if I could for my sir. time. Um, sir, what is your name again? I didn't. Sure, Peter Camps. Last name is C A M P S. I appreciate everybody coming out here today. Um, so do we. Yeah, and, and I think it's great. I'm not from this community, but obviously this country needs more communities that have the type of involvement that this one does and the concern for the people that um, actually uh, put all of us in office and allow all of us to do our, our, our jobs. Uh, I was contacted on very, very short notice from my client who got a, a notice that this would be happening, I think via certified mail, last Thursday. Uh, met with him over the weekend. He's obviously had to go through a very difficult weekend wondering if he's going to keep his job and if he's going to be able to support his family and if he's going to be able to continue to do the things that he's been doing his entire career. His career is on the line, his livelihood is on the line, his reputation is on the line, this community's safety is on the line. I was brought here for one reason, there's a notice and I guess you could call it a water mill notice and these folks may or may not know what that is. But there was one issue here today, not wearing safety gear. That's the allegation that was leveled upon my client. And it would seem to me the board has had the ability to talk to a number of people, consult with legal counsel. There's obviously a reason that we call this in great haste today and had folks work over the weekend and the client spent a lot of time getting ready for this. And what I see today are a number of extremely highly qualified people here today, many of whom would have extreme amounts of uh, knowledge, not only with this township's fire department, but also with Clay County. And the resounding response is that my client did absolutely everything right that day to protect this community. So my question to the board would be, why on earth are we here today? Exactly. And if we are not going to come to a conclusion on this one simple issue today, why are we holding this open? And if we are holding this open, is it just to find another reason to pin on him to get rid exactly. of that? Because Mr. Page was on that scene? Or is it to come to a further conclusion on the investigation that I thought would have been done before you drew up my client, had him retain legal counsel, put his career in peril, his life in jeopardy, and honestly, the life of every single person in this room's safety Amen. going forward. Where does this end? I mean, you've heard it from him. You've heard it from every qualified person here. You've heard it from people that showed up on the scene. You've heard it from his assistant fire chief. You've heard it from Clay Township. You've heard it from other township. So at this point, with the specific allegation that was leveled against my client, which is the one thing that he was prepared to deal with today, I think it's pretty obvious that he ought to be brought back to work. Now, if you want to come up with another post hoc reason to terminate my client because he's associated with Daryl DuPage and he's a political enemy of some of the people on this board, then you will take that and, and, and do that at your own risk because I think that there is a political reason for that. But in terms of the reason that we were brought here today, he's out a lot of money paying me. He's had angst each night that he's been here. All of these people have taken time off of their day to come here. Do we all need to come back again to discuss the same issue? Or can we get to a resolution on the issue that's before the board today? Is this right or is this wrong? And then you move on to whatever other post hoc reason you want to come up with to try to get rid of my client. I would just ask that you each consider that for a moment. The difficulty that you will put my client through sitting on administrative leave, which you all know, even though there's no discipline associated with it technically, we all know what that means for somebody's career. Who comes to a special board meeting, puts everything on that he needs to put on. I don't think there's one person here that doesn't support my client. These are the most qualified people in the world to talk about my client. And yet we're going to sit here for an indefinite period of time to come up with another reason to let my client go. I just don't understand why we would call a special board meeting at 1 o'clock with a couple of days notice, right. we're not going to come to a resolution on this issue. Yeah. If not, I'd like to know the direction that the board intends to go to and the amount of time that my client can spend or anticipate spending sitting on pins and needles, wondering if he's going to have a job, yeah. wondering if he can support his family, and wondering if there's a fire in this community or if they need to render mutual aid, if he has to sit on his hands, or if he's able to go out there and do what he's supposed to do and what he's done for the past 20 years. I would just like to clarify.
Well, the motion has been made to extend administrative leave, sir. And we have one board member especially that is not happy with the investigation. So, Tom, you want to answer that? How much time do you need? I, I don't know I about think, this. I That's think that I had stated until the next board meeting or establish a special meeting if something were to come up to do now and then. So I, I do think we have a time frame, or at least a maximum time frame. The next board meeting is on June 5th. That would be the, hopefully we would have answers by then. Really? Are we? We get two weeks. We're, we're speaking roughly of either having a special meeting or having to come up with a June 5th meeting. Well, I, uh, time I feel it is as long as it takes to do the investigation and question people the documents and all the information. Uh, that's how long it would take. And I would agree with the question, but hopefully we will have it at the latest by the June 5th. Okay. Uh, June 5th. The latest June 5th. Uh, I, I don't carve that in stone, Bob. I mean, I agree with Tom. I mean, if we need more time, if, if we're going down the path and we need to gather more information, and we don't have it by June 5th, but I would hope that we would have it by June 5th. Well, um, so the special meeting, do we get to 7 o'clock? We're all yes. looking around? Yes. We could. Could, yes. could you please do that? Because. 90% of us here are taking time off our regular Yeah, I think it's time off so I'll be about that. So I use 10 hours of paid from day to day. I mean, no disrespect, but these Why are we doing meetings that is 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 it isn't real conducive for the so people that are concerned with this. Okay. Please. It's hard for me to take time off my job without... Well heard. Yeah, thank well you. Heard. Um, so, to answer your question, sir, I'm going to go on record and say no later. In the next township board meeting. Okay. And if they don't, if they can't get it together by then. then Why was this convened today without an investigation being complete? Thank you. Yes. Thank you. I personally, sir. Uh, can you say something? <laughs> Based on comments that were made here today, some of the other trustees had additional information that they would like to investigate before they make a decision. So the supervisor had made up his mind, and everybody else hadn't gone along with it today. Is that why we're here? No, sir, that's not what I said. What I said was the investigation was complete. His investigation was complete, and he made his determination, and he couldn't get the rest of the board to join the charade. That's why this we're here. This board is not going to be bullied or right. forced into a determination or decision. <laughs> They will do so when their investigation is complete and when all board members are satisfied. Absolutely. So until June 5th, there's a major incident every time he's not allowed to go. <laughs> Just the loss of what wow. do we need to investigate. There's been no no major crime committed here. This man busted his ass, pardon me, busted his backside, saved the township business, sent everyone home to their family at the end of the fire. What's there to investigate? One man ran a pump. He kept qualified firefighters inside the building putting the fire out. Jason, please, please. I don't understand. It. You, you people are making it look like this is all nothing but a political firestorm coming from eight miles up the road, dragging down here into this township. I don't see how you cannot agree or see that, sir. And I do apologize for yelling, but that's the way I see it. Because this is coming right down the road from Artie Bryson because of what happened up there because Daryl ran that truck, who you know is more than qualified to run that truck safely. We kept two firefighters inside the building suppressing the fire. Bob, that's, that's the, the inve I just investigated. I'm gonna, I've heard everybody, I've given due process to That's where you go, you're close-minded again, Bobby. So, pardon me? You're close-minded again. No, put the, put, put the guy more, back on the job. How much more can be said? This affects yeah. our family. How much more? I'm standing here for over an hour. 
listening to everything. Beautiful, wonderful stories about this young man. He needs to go back to work. It's our family. I thought a couple of my models had a problem with Jason was available, but now they might be at fault. May, may I speak, sir? I, my hand was up. I, I just wanted to put in a good word for uh, Jason and the Ira Township Fire Department. I wanted to let you know, in my opinion, fire department and police officers, they, they risk their lives out there all the time. When I was a trustee of Cottrellville, there, I had to meet with both Green City and Ira, and I had a seizure, I have epilepsy, in front of the Ira Township uh, staff, and my mom very much appreciated the help that was given to her. Um, so, I mean, these guys, in that stressed environment, things are going to happen. I'd like to thank the two trustees and the clerk for at least voting to um, do further investigation before a decision is made. So, thank you very much. Thank you. We adjourn.